Hello there. Welcome to the program. I am Doris Fenter of Library Arts, and today we are going to learn how to create a dragon eye drawing. We're gonna talk about drawing on a simple sheet of copy paper, using pencil, black marker for some of the details, and color pencil for the details in the eye. Look forward to working with you, and we're going to go over the materials list in just a moment. Okay, it's time to uh, begin to discuss the materials you need today. You'll need just an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and you see that I've folded this in half because you're only going to need a half sheet of paper. So you can just fold it if you want, or you can cut it, or cut it when you're finished. You'll need a pencil. If your pencil doesn't have an eraser like mine, have a spare eraser. Have scissors if you do plan to cut your paper later. Black marker. You're gonna want a collection of color pencils. For the eye, you're gonna notice that the eye has a lot of yellows, greens, purples. The pupil of the eye is in black. The scaly skin surrounding the eye are tend to be in a brown, if you have a metallic gold or dark green color, but you could always choose a different color, but still use the same scale pattern. So you're going to want to collect some color pencils. If you have marker, you could use marker. Uh, color pencil is the best for this project, but you know, whatever you have is what we're going to work with. If you want to cut out the eye at the very end, like I did here, feel free to do that and just mount it on some paper. Okay, let's get started in the next video with sketching out the eye. Okay, let's get started with drawing the eye. The first thing you're gonna need is something round that you can trace. Now, this is just uh, a glass I have. It's about, you know, a finger length, maybe two and a half inches. And I'm going to uh, put it on my on my paper and I'm going to lightly, and I do mean lightly because we're gonna erase part of the circle in a few minutes, lightly trace it onto my paper. So just do a light tracing. If you wanna stop the video and go find a circle, go right ahead and then come right back. Okay, so this represents the center of the eye, the actual eyeball. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an arch over the top and we're going to come out to what would be the corners of the eyes like this and we're just putting a little curve there and now we're going to come down with another curve and that would be the bottom of the eye so we're seeing this much of the actual eyeball i think that's a good size right there um, so I can go ahead and sort of lightly erase that line. I don't have to erase it too hard because we're going to cover it all up anyway. And it actually is a good guide in a way because what we're going to do next is you can use that little bit of circle. So like I said, don't erase it all to give you a guide for echoing around the eye to make a bit of a lid. It's going to be a scaly lid indeed but we're going to start just echoing the shape of the eye all the way around like this, very lightly, because this gives you the chance to erase, make some subtle changes if you need to. Now around that, we're gonna do yet another lid, but we're gonna start with a little V shape at either corner of the eye, and that's gonna help us to see how far we want to go out. And I would make this part of the eye a bit larger, this lid a bit larger than the other one. And you see how lightly I'm doing this? So again, I can come back. See, I'm going to come right back in here to that little curve. And now I'm going to come back out. And I'm going to do the same thing below. Nice generous curve, maybe a little wider on the bottom. I think I'm gonna go a little bit wider. And I'm doing this light and sketchy so I can get it where I think it should be before I commit. Now on the corners, we're gonna make it look like one is overlapping the other. So we're gonna bring one in here 
and the other one comes and touches. So we're gonna bring this one in a little bit closer and this one comes up and touches it, just like that. So that's basically the shape of your eye. Now I can go in and say, okay, I don't need that line anymore. And because it was drawn so lightly, it's easy for me to take it away. That part of the circle that we traced before. And I can clean up any lines that I might want to clean up. Just survey it, make sure you like where the eye is. It has the upper, the lower lid, and then um, the corners of the eyes are right here upper lower lid and then another layer of lid beyond that now this one looks a little bit off here so again just clean that up a little bit before i commit there we go so now you're ready to take it to the ne next step which is to outline the circle edges here the inner and outer lids with a black sharpie marker so if you have a marker handy you're just going to go in here, outline the eye, get that inner lid, make sure you give a little attention to the corner of the eye. Turn your paper. It's a lot easier to turn your paper than to turn the marker. So that is the part of the eye that's visible. Now we're going to come over here. right in there and this is going to go over here okay then we're going to come out here now I know this might take you a minute maybe you have to go find a black marker so again if you need to go ahead and stop the video Get your black marker and then you can come back and do that now the other thing I want to just draw right now is right in the center of the eye is going to be that pupil now the pupil is a skinny seed like shape we're not going to see the point the point would be hidden behind the lid and I am also going to outline that And we'll stop right there. You go ahead and get your eye drawing completed. If you want to go back and erase any pencil lines, do that. Come back and we'll start talking about the scales on the, the dragon eye. And then we're going to begin to add color. See you in a minute. Okay, we're back. So at this point, you've probably outlined your eye for your dragon eye with the double lids and the sphere of the eyeball in the center. So now you're gonna to want to um, get your color pencils ready. If you're going to use color pencils, we're gonna start with the pupil of the eye, which is right here. And you're gonna notice that it's gonna be very black, but we're gonna leave a little bit of a highlight. So you don't wanna just color the whole thing in black. We're gonna leave a little bit of a highlight there. And then we're gonna work on the iris with all the colors, the yellows, the purples, the greens in there so let's get started so we already have a nice um dark black outline so we're going to start down here you don't have to press too hard in fact if you press too hard with color pencils that the the tip will tend to break on you and trust me i know because this happens to me constantly so i keep a little handy handheld sharpener nearby because Goodness knows it will happen, I'm sure, at some point during this program. So I'm gonna work my way up to the top of the pupil. I'm gonna leave a little square that actually goes a little bit beyond the pupil, just like that, as a little highlight reminder, like don't go into that rectangle there. And I'm gonna go ahead and color around that area. I can go a little darker now that I have a base color down, and we can come back and darken the pupil more later if we want. The idea uh, with color pencils, you get the darker colors by layering. You don't wanna just go full throttle with the color pencil. You'll break the point, 
and it's best to build up layers slowly. So already it feels like an eye. You got the pupil in, isn't that wonderful? Okay, so coming out from the eye are these like flame-like shapes. And I'm actually gonna start with the black and the shapes come out at uh, different heights and they're gonna go into a green yellow, but I'm just gonna lightly put some black down because that's gonna be sort of our transition into the purple is to have that black there. So we're gonna start with a little black and it's just little short lines um, of varying lengths, some longer, some shorter, getting a little darker as they're near the pupil. Now we're gonna introduce some purple and I actually like to keep several purples around, but the, the purple I'm using is more in the red violet. Um, not so much blue violet, and I actually have four, this was actually an indigo blue, but I have three purples and a dark blue. So those are the colors, we're gonna put the dark blue aside, but these three colors are primarily the ones I'm gonna work with. And then we'll bring some green yellow in, okay? So let's just start putting down some color. Again, it's going to be sort of like a um, little flame, flame-like shapes coming out from the center of the pupil. And you may have noticed I already covered up some of the white spot. I can go back and erase that afterwards. So I'm gonna bring some purple out, coming out from the eye, center. And I am gonna bring that reddish purple on top of the blue purple I started with. Again, just, yeah, here we go. Transitioning from the black to the bluish purple to the reddish purple. And then ultimately we'll be getting into um, the greens and yellows like that. And I have another reddish purple right here that I'm gonna bring in and darken and just show that this is sort of that color that blends in a bit with the edge of the pupil without going into the pupil. Okay, good. Now we're gonna bring um, some yellow in. And I'm actually going to lightly color in, it's funny because yellow is the complement of purple, but we're actually gonna be putting green over this. So it's not gonna stay like a complimentary, you know, sports team color combo. So I'm gonna lightly put a layer of yellow just as a base color for the center of the eye. And get that started. Next, I have this really great yellow green. It's like a vermilion. Um, well, actually it's called chartreuse, which I really like. And I'm gonna use that and start blending it over the yellow into the purple and outwards. And as I get closer to the edges of the um, iris here, it's gonna go more of a darker green. But for now, we're gonna use this yellow green it and I don't mind if the purple blends with that a little bit because you kind of ultimately do want that kind of blending outwards of the color. So I'm going to come over here, do a little more heavy around the purple and bring in some really awesome uh, dark green which I have right here and this one is called dark green. I thought it might have been called like forest green or something, but it's really just dark green. And the idea here too is we're gonna blend it towards the lighter green. And then we'll go back and we'll work on bringing it in even darker. So we're gonna start a little light because the whole idea again here is to build up color. So some are short, some are long, just like the purple. I'm gonna build it in. And then we're actually gonna go up here just a little bit too into the purple. So you can come around and curve that green inwards around like this. 
and make sure it's pretty, pretty dark near the edge of the iris. Because we're actually going to bring some black in because you'll notice there's a lot of darkness right near the edges and also in the corners here. So we're going to bring some black to really darken that green even further. And we don't want to go in too far. We just want to go in far enough to make that edge become very dark. But we still want to see that green coming in as well. So you're going to have a lot of darkness right near that edge of the iris, all the way down around the pupil. So I'm giving it a little bit of a black edge, building it up with the black, like that. And I'm going to go back with the green and blend that dark green and light green a little bit more and also blend that purple into the green a bit more. So I'm just taking that green just so they blend out a bit so it's a little softer. And then I'm going to take the lighter purple, that reddish purple, and just sort of lightly, again, to blend it a little bit more into the green, just lightly going over that so it doesn't feel too drastic a change. It's sort of like gently blending in as it moves across the eye, like that. So you get a really nice effect. You can go back and maybe darken up the black. I'm just gonna leave a little highlight rather than uh, do the other thing. And I'm gonna take that black just a little bit in here to darken up that transition too. So that the pupil feels like it's blending just ever so slightly into the purple surrounding it. So now you have a beautiful, beautiful eye here. Now, right here on the edges, the corners of the eyes, you would think in a normal eye you would have white. Well, here you're going to have black. So I'm going to get in there and make a nice, deep black framing the eye, which gives that eye that mysterious look that makes it really into a dragon eye. Just like that. Look how beautiful that looks. Now we haven't had the scale yet, so this is pretty cool. You're doing all the detail work first, and then we're going to go back and we're going to begin adding the scale. So I'm going to give you some time to get this done up to the point where you like it and you feel ready to move on to the next part, which is to draw the scales in marker and then to bring color pencil on top of that. So finish up the pupil and iris of your dragon eye, come back, and we'll get started on the scales. Okay, the eyeball has been colored in. We've got the iris, the pupil, the corners of the eyes. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the scales that uh, surround the eye. And as you can see here, the scales are going to be a uh, circle pattern, which is easy to draw. I will get you started now, and then you can draw your own. I'm actually going to use my marker. If you feel like you'd really like the comfort of doing some pencil work first, that's okay. We're gonna start on the in, inner portion of the eye and work our ways out. So right near the eyeball itself, we're just gonna do a little scallop pattern. We're just gonna go little half rounds all the way along the edge of the eye. Like that. We're going to do the same thing uh, on the bottom, although here in the corner we won't have that, so I'm going to just continue that scallop round. Again, I'm doing mine with marker. You may choose to do yours with pencil so that you can erase any changes, but I think it's easier for you to see it if I just do it like this, just with my black permanent marker. Now, once we've got that, we're gonna start a circle pattern. Now, right here in the corner, you may have smaller circles, but when you have room for bigger circles, you can start adding them. So I'm going to add, you know, maybe a row of circles up here, 
You could also do that scallop pattern if you want. I'm going to go ahead and just do circles here. Then I'm gonna come back. And I'm gonna add circles in between. If they fit larger, I'll make them larger. If they need to be smaller, I will make them smaller. I'm not worried about perfection with the circles. I just want to fill the lid. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat the same thing down here, starting with circles in the corner here, like this. At some point, you may be able to fit maybe a couple circles or a half circle, like I could do that too. I didn't do that on the top, but I could continue this if I wanted and then put circles in there. It really doesn't matter. You could do it like this. That's a little wider there. Or you could do the half round like that. And then you're gonna continue on the outer lid. So I'll get started here again, maybe doing some larger circles here. I'll do some half rounds going along the edge here, maybe a little bit bigger in the center, maybe a little smaller as they get outward. Circles coming in here, half round again, just to show this is the edge of the eye. And then I can fill the rest in with regular circles, not very big, just enough to fill the space and make a bit of a textured pattern. That's what we're going for. We're going for a textured pattern. So I'm gonna just put a bit here and to show you what the possibilities are. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here with the half round. A little bit bigger towards the middle getting slightly smaller as they go to the corner of the eye. Same thing on the bottom, circles in here, start the half round, go all the way around the edge of the eye, lid with the half round, then I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. So I'm gonna let you do this. You know what I'm gonna do next. I'm just gonna come in here with circles, filling in the texture of the scaly lid of the dragon. You're gonna do the same. If you did yours in pencil, go over it in black marker, then meet me here again for the next video where we start going over the color for the upper and lower lid. Okay, welcome back for uh, the coloring in of the scales. So I have finished drawing the circle pattern. And when you take a shape like a circle and you use it in a repeated line, you can create that illusion of a texture. And that's what we're after right here, is sort of a, you know, a pebbly texture around the lids of the eyes. So I'm gonna start again by layering colors, starting lightly, it's going to be a, a green color, and notice how I'm not coloring in individual squares. You're gonna be able to go back later and add black on top if you want um, to emphasize the bumps, the texture. But I'm putting a very light coat of a um, kind of a golden yellow just very lightly. Um, along the upper and along the lower eyelid. I really like the idea of base coats. I think it creates the foundation, if you will, for the color. And you'll notice that artists often do that. Like you'll say, why is the artist putting green on the skin of that woman? Well, he's putting it down where she's putting it down as a base coat that you're gonna build porcelain or tan or deep browns on top of that. Okay, so um, I'm going to add a darker brown, sort of a mid-brown, not dark brown, but a mid-brown 
right around the edge of the eye. That's gonna be quite dark in a little bit, but I'm gonna start with this mid-tone brown, and then I'm gonna bring in the dark green, because I see a kind of pretty brown, shadowy color there. But then I'm gonna bring that same kind of forest green I used earlier is gonna come back in. You see how it blends so beautifully over the brown? Bring it out a little bit, keeping it really quite dark near the edge of the eye. And we're actually gonna bring black in there too. So I am building up the green to give him a grail, kind of a green, uh, gray, scaly color. If you don't have a metallic gold color pencil, you can just stick with the greens and build up that way. So again, I don't have to sit here and try to color in all these circles because there's already a nice black outline around them. I'm gonna get again darker near the edges of the eye like this. And the inner corners. And then I can bring in some black to really give it that shadowy look right near the edge of the eye. A nice dark shadow, but you still have that nice green coming out. So you want to keep that green showing, but with the black adding a bit of shadow because the eye is going to be in shadow with the lid there and it's going to blend into the black we added earlier. So you see how it's gradually building up to be darker here. Now, here's my metallic gold. The, the, the image I used as a reference had a really pretty metallic gold finish. So I'm putting the gold over the green, but again, you don't have to. This kind of gives it a green gold look, which I actually like. So I'm gonna put this metallic gold you see already we've really done a lot of work towards that outer eye. Now I'm going to bring some dark green near this crease. When you tend to have a crease, you're going to tend to have more shadow. And that helps to separate one lid from the other. So I'm going to go in with a dark green followed by uh, the black. I'm not going to find my black. Where did it go? Here it is. So once again, really gonna bring that black in, using like a little circular stroke to blend it in. You wanna see those lines? Well, go in here and just use your pencil and just show off those circles. Don't let them disappear. But keep the darkness near the edges, near where the lid touches the next lid shape, like that. Okay, so now we're gonna move out here. I'm actually going to start with a little bit more of that gold is almost like a highlight here on top of the yellow. And a little bit of the gold right here. Again, in a circular kind of pattern. Then we're gonna work darker as we go out. So a little gold right there, coming all the way around. Stop this video whenever you need to, to get caught up Slow down, Doris, you're going too fast for me. Well, if this were a live video, I would be doing it uh, much slow, slower. But since it isn't, I'm able to go faster to show you, if you want to jump ahead, what to do next. Here comes some light green, which will be followed by the dark green, and then some of that black again. So I'm going to take that in here to the inner corners. I don't want it all to be gold. I just want sort of the highlight of the gold. So I said, if you don't have gold, don't worry about it. You can use yellow, you can use a green. Now we're gonna go back to the dark green. Kind of blending it into the gold. Like this. And now we're really making some progress. So we've got that nice dark green coming in here, being a little darker near the corners. That tends to be a darker area. So you want to emphasize that shadow there.
coming around here, going on top of the gold a bit. So the gold acts like a bit of a highlight without being too dark. Around here, and again, I'm turning my paper so that I don't have to keep turning my wrist to do this drawing. So now I'm getting really close to being finished. And then I can take a look and I can say, hmm, you know what? I could use, you know, some more emphasis on the circles here. So I'm gonna bring them out a bit, but you still see them enough. And that's the whole idea is you wanna see them enough without them being too strong. I'm just darkening up the black again where the lids meet bringing that black in there to really emphasize the shadow where the lids overlap, and then maybe a little bit of darkness down near the edge of the eye like this, mixing it a bit with the green. So it has that really kind of, it's almost like an alligator, a snake eye. You can imagine it being a lot of different kind of creatures, a dragon eye, which is what I'm calling it but it really could be connected to a lot of different animals. Any kind of reptilian style animal this could really be connected with. And that is really about it. You have a beautiful dragon eye. Now, if you want, the next step would be to simply take your scissors, cut out that dragon eye very carefully around the black outline, like so. Now, because this is thin copy paper, uh, if you have some thin cardboard, it'll give it a little stability and you could just use a glue stick, attach it to the thin cardboard. Like that. There's my dragon eye. And you see how it's kind of folding up, rolling up a little bit, oops, upside down. Um, what I did, you can, you know, see right here, you know, just mounting it on a darker sheet of paper can really give it a great look. Putting something brighter, this is actually slightly smaller than the other one, but you could even see, you could even layer this on top of another eye. Um, I put it on the green paper and then mount it on blue. So I just want to remind you, stop the video, take a look where you need to, to see what you want to do to improve your drawing or finish your drawing. And I'm so glad you joined me today for this program. And I hope you enjoy drawing this dragon eye. This is Doris Punter of Library Arts. I hope that we can work together again soon. Bye.